Hey YouTube, hey subscribers, thanks for tuning in. I stumbled across an article the other day that I wanted to share with you guys that I think will strike a chord and may even be slightly controversial. The intent of this video is not to be controversial, rather it's to pull out the main idea and the points that this author is making in this article. So I am going to read the article first. For those of you who hate the long intros, I will put a timestamp for when I'm done reading the article. And I will also link the article for you, so if you just want to to go read it first and then come to the timestamp, feel free. But we're going to go ahead and read the article now and then I'm going to give you my commentary on points that this author was making. My parents expect me to take care of them and I don't know what to do about it. Doris Lamb, guest writer. In a Chinese society where tiger parents are the norm, children from a young age are pushed to become the best of the best by attending kindergarten prep schools that include supplemental curriculum not found at other schools such as English accent correction classes, after school tutorial centers, and other extracurricular activities. Children are expected to give back to the parents when they reach adulthood by providing monthly allowances to show filial piety, a deeply ingrained core value in the Chinese culture which describes respect for one's parents. Growing up in Hong Kong, my traditional Chinese parents were no different, often exclaiming, I can't wait until our daughter grows up and buys the luxurious mansion car dinner for us. And then they turn to me and say, when we're retired, remember what we did for you. I'd always respond with something along the lines of panicked smiling, wavering eye contact, and mental calculations of whether it would be remotely possible for me to buy them the items they were referring to. I'd then quietly wait for the discussion to die out or pray for the subject to change while my anxiety built up. As a child, my parents enrolled me in ballet, piano, foreign language classes, and kumon, and hyper-monitored every aspect of my life. They made sure every action that I made would be beneficial to my future and forbade anything that might have led me toward an unsuccessful life or what they viewed as a path of irreversible doom. Although I see now they only wanted the best for me and appreciate them investing so much money and time into my growth and potential, my teenage self was filled with stress and frankly resentment and anger directed at my parents for the high expectations and the lack of freedom I had for my own life. From my parents banning all sleepovers to turning down my pleas to study art in high school and forcing me to break up with boyfriends to focus on my studies. The more disapproving lectures they sat me through, the more suffocated I felt, and the more suffocated I felt, the less their words rang true to me. Phrases such as, this is for your own good, and you will thank us one day, started to sound repetitive and meaningless. Since they didn't let me study art, they pushed me toward taking business classes in school, thinking it would lead to higher wages and better job prospects. I hated it. The year I started taking business class, I drowned myself in self-pity and lost all motivation for school. When report card day came, half of my grades were in red with the word retain neatly printed out in striking red ink. I had to repeat 10th grade. I was devastated, yet not too surprised. At 16, I had become the thing they dreaded most, a problematic, academically ungifted daughter who failed school. Repeating the year ended up being a blessing in disguise. While I still wasn't able to study art, I dropped business from my curriculum and diverted my focus on English literature and writing. My parents didn't disapprove, and halfway through the school year, I entered a writing competition on a whim and ended up winning a spot to study creative writing in England for the summer. It was not only the beginning of my journey as a budding writer, but also the first time I felt like I had made my parents proud. It was a bittersweet moment when my parents joked with each other, exclaiming, we finally have something to brag about then looking over at me, expecting me to laugh along. I did because despite all the resentment I felt towards my parents, I still yearned for their approval. Now that I'm older, I'm finally gaining more independence with my life and I'm grateful for all the opportunities my parents were able to create for me and the times they looked out for me. Without them pushing me when I was younger, I know I wouldn't have had the discipline or motivation to work towards my personal goals of becoming a writer. However, a new expectation regarding money has weaved itself into the undertones of our conversations to have enough to support my soon-to-be-retired parents. As a 22-year-old university student, living in Hong Kong, one of the most expensive cities in the world, that frightens me. In between taking part-time jobs and internships that pay just above the HKD 37.5 or USD $4.80, 
minimum hourly wage in odd gigs, I'm making barely enough money to support myself. The feeling of inadequacy and the pressure of earning more money linger in mind every time my parents half-jokingly remind me that I'm their retirement plan. The fear of disappointing them outweighs anything else. It's almost to the point where I feel ashamed for even wanting to buy something, let alone actually purchasing the item. Knowing that my mom would eventually spot it and ask with her eyes narrowed suspiciously, how much did you spend on it? And that in our minds, we're both thinking how the $10 or $20 could have been used for family expenses instead of buying a new blouse from Zara. While a part of me wishes I had the ability to provide for my parents by paying off their bills, taking them out for dinner, or even buying them a nice house one day, the other part is still holding on to all the anger that I've carried from my teenage years. Hurt that my parents are now using calculated remarks to suggest I'm forever indebted to them for raising me. To them, they've succeeded in leading me towards the right career path and proper life. To me, my success belongs to myself because I've never felt support from them my entire life. And it seems like I'm not the only one who feels this way. As a regular meme tagger of subtle Asian traits, a popular Facebook group dedicated to sharing relatable content on Asian culture and upbringing, I stumbled upon a post discussing the topic of giving back to parents through financial assistance. While a majority of the people give money to their parents out of love and responsibility, others are guilted into doing so, joking that they're their parents' 401k and investment plan. I've watched ex-boyfriends dedicate more than half their monthly salaries to their parents and my dad discreetly sliding money into my grandparents pockets every other time we go for dim sum. This tradition is so deeply ingrained in the Chinese culture that no discussion is even necessary to know that it's expected. The need for open communication instead of guilt and manipulation to get what you want applies to all relationships, but especially with families. Giving back to parents should be something that's done out of appreciation rather than the misguided notion of equating love with money or the duty of showing filial piety to parents. As much as I wish I could express these thoughts out loud to my parents, I'm scared of what they might have to say. My relationship with my parents is far from perfect, but there's no doubt in my mind that I'll set aside part of my first paycheck from my full-time job for my parents because that's what I've been raised to believe. At the very least, I hope when the time comes, I'll be doing it out of love instead of guilt. I want to start this video by saying that the following commentary is not meant or intended to disrespect the Chinese culture in any way or any other culture that might have this particular tradition ingrained within the culture. I mean absolutely no disrespect towards you or your culture. However, I do have to always raise the question, is the culture healthy? Now, this is coming from someone who is an American, and we have our own culture, and we have a lot of things embedded within our own culture that are not healthy. And I'd like to think that I speak on those often. So this is not an indictment of the Chinese culture in particular, but I thought that this author and this article were an excellent illustration of some of the narcissistic behaviors that live in and dwell within families sometimes. I believe I've touched on this in the book that I wrote called The Narcissist You're Dating, Why These Types of Relationships Never Work. And it boils down to the expectation component. It's the you must versus I hope you choose to, or I hope you will. It's the if you don't, I won't love you. If you don't, I won't protect you. If you don't do this thing, you will not receive compassion, love, empathy, support, protection from me. So it is highly, highly contingent upon what you do for them, not your existence, not who you are, not just the simple fact that you are, it's what you do for them, almost like how an employee is supposed to do something for their employer. And in exchange for that employee doing that thing, the employer pays them money. It's a highly transactional relationship, as it should be when you are exchanging goods and services for time and money. When it comes to relationships and families, it's not supposed to be this way. And here's where I'm going to go ahead and diverge and perhaps upset some of you who may be listening. Here's my personal belief, and I've always been of this personal belief. Your children owe you nothing. 
They owe you nothing. And here's the reason why. They did not ask to be here. So when a parent holds over their child's head and lords over their child's head, I did this for you. I raised you. I helped you out here. I bailed you out here. Well, this is an entity that you brought forth into the world that you knew would need money, clothes, shelter, food. You knew they would need provisions. Now you hope that by virtue of how well you've raised them and the responsibility that you've built into them, you hope that they become self-sustaining, self-actualized, fully functional adults. That is the hope and the goal. But the reality is there is no guarantee they will become those things. And as a parent, are you prepared for the potential that they may not become those things? That said, this article is touching on the cultural expectation that when the children reach a certain age, they are going to provide for their parents, period. There's no question about it. Here's where I stand on that particular subject. Me personally, I plan and plan on taking care of my parents once they reach a certain age where they can no longer take care of themselves. That is the goal for me. That's the goal for me because I want to do that. Here's the other piece of that component. Neither one of my parents has ever placed a burden on me telling me that I had to take care of them once I reached a certain age. Neither one of my parents has ever asked me for money. If anything, they're always the ones giving me money when I need to be bailed out and need to be helped out in a situation. And ever since I was young, I've always wanted to repay them because I recognize the sacrifice that they made and make as parents, even though it was an active choice. That's just where I personally stand. But here's the reality. The reality is you really don't have to. And that's the thing. It's the expectation that you better take care of me because I took care of you. Well, you had to take care of them because they were children. For a long time, they weren't able to take care of themselves and they are your creation, your entity. So it's almost like they make it seem like feeding the baby, changing the baby's diaper, giving the baby food, clothing, and shelter, like they're doing the baby this huge favor when without those things, the baby would literally not survive. So it's no huge favor these parents are doing for their kids in basically keeping them alive, making sure that they had all that they needed to launch into the world. The child did not ask for that. They were born into the world innocent, pure, and helpless. And they relied on you to take care of them. And that is not something that should be used as a bargaining chip later on in life. Kind of going deeper into that, the author was saying how In their culture, they often joke how their parents see them as their 401k and retirement plan. So then that tells me, possibly, that the parents have done absolutely nothing to ensure their own survival into the future. They've done absolutely nothing to prepare for their later years because their preparation was their child. So not only is that irresponsible to a degree, because what if your child dies? What if your child suddenly becomes disabled or injured to a degree that they can no longer work? It's a foolish approach because it really relies on a whole lot of different things going well and going well for a sustained period of time. So what pressure does that put on a child knowing that my parents haven't done anything to make sure that they're going to be okay? It's all on me. So then the next question that that begs for me is, at what point does that child actually get to live? At what point does that child actually get to exist? At what point does that child get to be their own person? No matter what culture you grew up in, you are still human. So being a human being, at what point do you get to be a human being when you grow up like this? Children are not servants. They're not slaves. They're not retirement plans. They're not crutches. And they're not to be used as tools to support their parents throughout life. You can tell whether or not a child is going to have a narcissistic experience growing up based on the reasons their parents had them. Some people will actually say flat out, oh, I had my kids for some help. I gave birth to my children for some help. I'm not going to wash these dishes for the rest of my life. I need someone to take care of me when I'm older. I'm going to go live with my kid when I get old. So if someone is already planning, scripting, 
what their child will do for them in the future and the child is not even here yet or the child just got here and they're already being placed in these servant roles in the future. How fair is that to that child? Did they choose that? Did they get to choose that life? Now, a lot of children choose it. A lot of children stay very close to their parents throughout their parents' whole life. They like being there. They don't mind it at all. And if that is the case, so be it, because that is your choice. You're not there under duress. You're not there under coercion. You're there because you want to be, because that's what your heart is leading you to do and you're pleased with it, and you feel satisfied, and like your dignity is intact, then that's what you are supposed to be doing. But make sure it is always something that is originating from you in your head and your heart, and not out of fear of rejection, fear of abandonment, fear of being ostracized from the family. Make sure those aren't the motivations. If those are the motivations, that is a very narcissistic approach your parents are taking with you. You're not an ATM machine. You're not a 401k plan. That's very cold and that's a very callous way to treat another human being who's only present in your life because you brought them into your life. It also begs the question, do you really love this child or do you love what this child can do for you? Do you love the potential this child has and the possibilities of all the money this child might bring you? Did you groom them and raise them up in all these different sports and things of that nature with the hopes that they would go on to become big and successful and famous to not only support and inflate your personal ego, but also to funnel cash to you for the rest of their lives and yours? If so, those motivations are off. Those are off base. Children should be in those things to enrich them because they're fun for them, because they learn teamwork and discipline and hard work and the joys of a win and how to cope with losses. And if they have a natural talent or gift that they follow that leads to success, so be it. But if they never follow that path and they never take that superstar approach, will you still love them? Are they still valuable to you or are they no longer of any use to you because they can't bring you fame and glory? These are the things that people are dealing with that no one likes to talk about. So I'm really proud of this author, especially considering the cultural context. I'm proud of her for writing this and putting it out there because it's not only therapeutic for her culture, but for anyone's culture who puts this type of pressure on their children. So what are you saying, PTE? You're saying kids should just grow up and totally neglect their parents and tell them, good luck, you're on your own. You should have planned for your own future. No, of course, that's not what I'm saying. I would never suggest that people just abandon their parents. This is what I'm saying. All people did not come from healthy parents. All people were not raised by people who had their best intentions in mind. So if you are someone who was raised with a parent or parents who constantly told you that every move you make is in service to them in the future, what I'm basically telling you is that you have a choice. You have a choice. And most people, in spite of everything, will default more than likely to caring for your parents. And I'm not saying that that's the wrong thing. I'm just saying recognize that you do have a choice that you are a human being, you're not an ATM machine, you're not a servant, you're not a slave, you're not a retirement plan, you're not a crutch, you're a human being who was born to live and be a human being. And yes, we have to take care of each other in this life and look out for each other, but don't ever allow the guilt or the guilt trip to drive your actions because then are they really rewarding? Are you really satisfied if you're being guilt tripped to do this and not really moved to do this out of your own heart? Do you even have a voice in your household? Could you even speak up about something like this? Probably not. So it's kind of all strung together. It's not like they were super great people and then they have just this one thing about them, but otherwise super great people. It usually comes with a suppression of your voice, a suppression of your autonomy, a suppression of who you are as a person, just you being you. So I imagine this type of lifestyle has the potential to either create true codependence or true rebels, one or the other. There's typically no middle ground for people who come up in these types of environments. So my heart really goes out to them. So what is the solution? I think the author summed it up best when she said, 
The need for open communication instead of guilt and manipulation to get what you want applies to all relationships, but especially with families. Giving back to parents should be something that's done out of appreciation rather than the misguided notion of equating love with money or the duty of showing filial piety to parents. And I really think she said that best. What we want to cultivate and nurture are environments that are mutually reciprocal with their giving and receiving receiving, environments that are very loving and safe, environments where there's high trust, and environments where a little human can really grow up and flourish into somebody with a compassionate heart. You hope that we're raising these citizens of the world. We would hope that. And we would also hope in that same household that those parents wouldn't put pressure on the child to serve them in their later years because they served the child when the child was completely helpless. Those two don't even match. They're not even balanced. Hopefully the parents planned ahead for their own future as if the children wouldn't make enough money to take care of them because it is possible that that could be the case. Hopefully the parents would be able to kind of see the writing on the wall in terms of the economy and start making decisions for their own lives to ensure that they are safe going into the future. We're trying to cultivate healthy environments that produce healthy people that make healthy choices for themselves and for their futures. And it really should be no more, no less than that. It's not a lottery system. It's not a gambling system. It's not a betting process. If you have children, love them, nurture them, teach them, Let them grow and go, and hopefully the love that you placed in their heart, they will return to you one day, but plan for the possibility that they might not. And be satisfied that you raised a kind-hearted, well-rounded human being that is participating in the world in hopefully a productive and meaningful way and be satisfied with that. So that's all I'm going to say on this particular article and topic. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it was eye-opening. Please share your comments and your personal stories below and please add any additional insights to the conversation. Thank you guys so much for listening. And as always, I grant you the permission to exist. Bye-bye.